throughout this course, before we carry through with any statistical procedure, we're going to be concerned with verifying the conditions for the approach that we're using. <clears throat> so sometimes we might have multiple ways we could attempt to proceed with a problem, but we need to ensure that the approach we're using is correct given the data that we have. So we'll be constructing those conditions throughout the course as we introduce new topics. For histograms and dot plots, the only thing that we technically have to verify <clears throat> is that we're dealing with numerical data, which is, again, data that can be ordered, ranked, comparisons can be made between those different numbers. But in some cases, a histogram or a dot plot might be a better choice than the other or a worse choice than the other. So let's talk about a few of the drawbacks for each of these types of graphs. So we have an example of one of the histograms and one of the dot plots we considered. One drawback to histograms is that we lose precision. That is, we lose the information on the individual data values. <clears throat> so we know that one country had between 1,200 and 1,400 police officer deaths. But we don't know how many deaths there actually were. That could be 1,201. It could be 1,350. It could be 1,300. As soon as we convert things into a histogram, we lose the, the precision, the specificity of those individual numbers. We've also seen that changing bins or changing your bin width can change the picture. So for instance, here we have one class that's empty and then we have a potential outlier. If we scroll back to that first page, we had the two different graphs and then with different bin widths, with one of the bin widths, we actually have no breaks in the graph. So it becomes very difficult to tell if there are any outliers. This graph would lead someone to believe that there aren't because we have continuous classes for all those values. But then with a different bin width, we see a larger gap. So changing the class width has the potential to change what we see or what we communicate. So changing bin widths can change the picture. And histograms can be bad for small data sets. Or maybe the better way to say that is histograms work better for large data sets. If we had a small data set, we'd have um, a class from 0 to 200, and we'd have a class, a frequency of 1. We'd have a frequency of 1, a frequency of 1. So we have the potential to kind of have a bunch of classes of all the same frequency, which isn't necessarily bad, but maybe not the best way to present that information. Um, for dot plots, it might be tough to basically something as practical as count all of the dots in a particular column. If the dots are relatively few in number, not a big deal, but imagine this list kind of growing larger and larger and larger, and then having another one that was similar but not quite the same, and you needed to know the difference between how many dots were in one column versus the other, that can start to become a little confusing when those columns get too large. Um, a large spread in our data would be hard to picture. or hard to graph or represent. So keep in mind for dot plots, every single number has to be represented along this x-axis. So if we considered the police officer deaths that range from 0 to 1400, it would take an incredibly wide, long x-axis to represent all of those. So when our data values are close together, like from 0 to 0 0.1, a dot plot can be great. But if there's a lot of spread in our data, it might not be a very good tool. So what are some of the advantages then to these types of graphs? So dot plots are good for precision because again, we retain the individual data values. We know that exactly one country had a value of 
so we're not talking about ranges, we're talking about specific numbers. So good for precision with small data sets with limited spread. Histograms are really good at capturing large amounts of data either with lots of spread, very little spread. Um, so anytime we're dealing with a large number of numbers, histograms are usually our best approach. Now, none of these are hard and fast rules. There's no clear cut answer for you should use this graph, you should use that graph. If we're dealing with numerical data, we'd be using one of these two types of graphs, but ultimately it's up to the person who's reporting or trying to communicate the information they've collected they'll decide which approach will effectively and clearly communicate what that data tells us. And in this class, as you are practicing for the role of being a statistician or someday reporting information to an employer, um, to a partner, something like that, um, your goal is to be thinking about how you can most effectively present and report the information that's being presented.